Today, we're going to speak about rising damp. It is the bane of any cottage owner's life. Um, rising damp comes when the walls of your building come down to the foundation without a separating layer, a plastic layer. And when cottages were built a very, very long time ago, uh, they didn't pay any consideration to this. So what happens is um, water from the outside will migrate up through the wall, um, especially to the inside of the wall. And when the inside is heated with condensed air, it'll condense and evaporate on the wall, creating uh, dampness, mildew, uh, white staining, flaking paint, and lots of other uh, moldy uh, bits growing. So it's a real bane, it's a difficult thing to solve in cottages. And today I'm gonna to show you a number of solutions and the one that I chose and the problems that I had when I did it and what I've learned along the way. So this is some rising damp. And as you can see, it's very, very pronounced at the bottom um, of the wall. And as it moves up through the wall, you can see it gets drier and disappears. And that's the classic signs of rising damp. You can see the, the symptoms here, this green mildew. Um, when it gets very hot, that'll produce mold, mushrooms, um, white spores, and this just can't be left untreated in any modern home. So we have to look at different solutions. There are solutions to inject um, the wall, but I think with old cottages, the walls being so deep and the joints between the stones being so fragile and uncertain that relying on this sort of injection process won't really work um, and won't deliver a good result. So we are looking at a tanking system and uh, this is an applied system of a, a paint onto the wall which prevents the moisture coming through. People will say, well, you should, you should let it breed, you should let the tanking breed and there are some great products out there um, that do allow the wall to breed um, while also uh, preventing the moisture passing through. For me, I'd prefer to, to block it out completely, um, understanding the risks with that, uh, which, you know, dampness trapped in a wall will sort of corrode the cementitious material, the lime, uh, over time. But I made the conscious decision just to block it out completely because the water ingress is, is quite severe. Um, where I am, the stone kind of curls upwards and the water migrates through the cracks and curls up into the wall and elements of the walls that I have here are actually on the rock. So that means that uh, it's very likely, it's really hard to stop the water coming in. And I certainly don't wanna take the risk of applying the system and then having further issues uh, down the road or mildew behind furniture and that. So I, I made a decision to go for a full cementitious uh, system and I will now show you uh, how that is done. So the first stage in this process is to level off the substrate that you're working with and to basically plaster it with just standard sand and cement. And that will create, you know, a rounded edges to the material so that when you paint on the tanking, that it will uh, just be unbroken. It won't be an arid edges. Now, I made the big mistake here of putting waterproofer into my cement mix, which uh, reacts with the Heidi product that I'm using. So I've had to, once I had plaster it, I had to plaster it again in order to create a separation layer um, from the uh, cement with the waterproofer in it. Um, and then the Heidi tanking goes on to that second coat, uh, which will ensure that it doesn't react with the uh, waterproofing agent in the concrete. This is the system that I've used. It's a Heidi uh, Bostic K11, and it comes in a nice box here where you can mix the products. So inside the box is the, the cementitious powder um, and a liquid that gets applied to the powder. Um, I also have to put some electrical sockets on the wall which means I'll have to drill holes through the tanking. So I've got this um, silicone product here, which uh, is squeezed into the holes. There's a procedure with this that's given, it's a technical document that's given along with it. 
Squeeze it into the hole and then you can put your plug and screw in and that maintains the waterproofing. Now obviously you want to do that as little as possible. Important to note, uh, we are retrofitting this now into this building. So this building's been finished. You can see the timber floor here and there's a granite banded edge around the building. So the floor itself has previously been pulled up and fully insulated and uh, tanked uh, itself with a, a damp proof coarse membrane. So we are bringing the Heidi tanking down to uh, the stone band and we're just lapping it over slightly and painting it. Ideally, uh, we would have brought this right down and under the concrete and onto the concrete floor to get a really, really good seal. It's too difficult to do that at this point. Maybe sometime in the future I might go at it. Uh, but for now, uh, this is the best solution. I am also aware that in behind this um, granite edge, uh, there is the uh, DPC or DPM, which runs up the back. So I'm pretty certain that the seal here should be pretty sufficient for what I need to do. As you can see here, we've mixed the products up into a sort of a paste-like format. It's kind of a paste and then we're spreading it on. I'm gonna use a finer, smaller brush down the level, the bottom levels just and into the edges just to get a really nice seal into those because I'm using quite a large brush here. And you can also see I'm sort of slopping it on to create an arid surface because on top of this surface will be another layer of uh, sand and cement to finish off the full sealing of the product and to protect the product over time. It just goes to show that any homeowner or self builder can tackle these tasks. Um, I've had fantastic support from Quigley Conservation who've given me a lot of guidance on how to use their product and um, it's really made it a lot easier for me to tackle this job and I'm looking forward to the results now uh, of a damp free home.